It's you that I see. It's you that I see. One more time. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As you lift your hands to say. As we take our time to pray this morning, we ask for open heavens. Open heavens to pray. Open heavens to intercede. Open heavens to draw grace. In Jesus' name. Clap those hands and take your seat. I'm talking of the Almighty. Clap for the Almighty God. The Almighty. The Almighty. The Almighty. The ageless God. The ageless God. All right, take your seat. Normally we begin our programs in the evening, like many know, but this morning I have been leading for us to come together, hear the word of God briefly and pray. One of the things you must draw from this ground is the power to pray. And the hunger to pray. Galatians chapter 3 would be verse 1. This is more of a prayer service to open the meeting and what God will be doing from tonight. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to read it together loud and clear. Galatians 3 1. Have we found it? After the count of 2. 1, 2, go. Oh foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus had been evidently set forth, crucified among you? So I'm asking a question this morning. Who had bewitched you? My message this morning is who had bewitched you? Who has, bring the echo down please, who has bewitched you? Over time I have exposed and exposed to us the oppressions of witchcraft. I've explained to us how God, if there is something God hates and frowns out, it is witchcraft. One of the reasons Jezebel was destroyed was not necessarily because she was domineering, even though witchcraft is one of the signs and um, you know, very obvious manifestations of witchcraft is to be domineering. One of the reasons God killed Jezebel in 2 Kings 9.22, he said, our witchcraft are so many. Jezebel was not a witch, she was a witches. It was not a witch, she was what? A witches. That's what the Bible didn't say, our witchcraft. It said, our witchcrafts. Plural. Plural. Our what? So many. So she was not just in one coven. She was in several. And I told us the word witch means to bend. To divert. Whenever you say the word witch, to bend. So when somebody is, uh, is under witchcraft manipulation, there is a satanic diversion. The word craft is an art. The act of doing something. The act of doing something. There's act of doing something. When somebody promotes food and all of that, it can be called food craft. The act, the word craft is the act of doing something. So witchcraft means the act of diverting. The act of swindling. The act of usurping. The act of taking advantage. In Micah chapter 5 verse 12, God said he will cut off all the witchcraft. All. In Deuteronomy 18, I believe verse 10, he said, There shall not be found a witch among you or an enchanter. An enchanter or a witch. The word of God said in Exodus 22, 18, he said, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. 
So God is against any trace or any form of spell or any connection to wickedness in the dimension of witchcraft. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, one of the dimensions of witchcraft was exposed. He said, witchcraft is like the sin of rebellion. Stubbornness is like iniquity and idolatry. So God is against witchcraft. Now the place where we read, now listen to me very well because you need to understand this. I hope I'm able to finish this today. The Galatian church was a church of power. The Galatian church, now there were three churches that were really strong and strength in those days. One of them was the church of Corinth. The Corinthian church was like the seat of power in those days. Political power. Money. Talk about money. Corinthian church had money. Talk about influence. The Corinthian church had influence. Talk about a church, yeah, they had professors, they had intellectuals. It was the Corinthian church. And that is why, if you check most of the controversies in scripture, it was in the Corinthian church. Because they knew too much. And their knowledge was a problem. Most of, and the Bible says, the Corinthian church was a church that came backward in no gift. Not only did they have money, not only did they have intellect, they were gifted. All the full gifts of the Spirit were in oppression in the Corinthian church. That was why if you see 1 Corinthians 12, that is when the gift of the Spirit was explained. Because people didn't know what healing ministry was. They saw themselves flowing healing. People didn't know what prophecy was. They saw themselves hearing from God and they were saying it. People didn't know what word of knowledge was. So Paul had to explain. In fact, they would argue with Paul. He got to a time Paul would tell them, well, judge among yourself because Paul was tired. It was a church that was so forward. He said, judge among yourself. Whatever you think is right, go ahead and do it. I'm tired. The Corinthian church was a church of, that were, they were very current. Current. They knew the latest and they will bring it to church. They knew the latest and they will bring it to church. When they have a board meeting, when they have a board meeting, there are issues that were not resolved at home. They will bring it to church. And that's why people don't understand it. A man has an issue with his wife, and then when it's time to try, he has something to say, and he blasts the husband. Paul now said, please, keep quiet. Talk to your husbands at home. He wasn't saying women don't talk in church. Family issues, keep quiet about it. Do not bring it to church. But those who don't understand, pick a part of the scripture and say no woman should say anything. Yeah, it was Priscilla and Aquila that took Paul in. If women won't talk, then Priscilla won't say anything. Am I communicating? All the all those days, one of the signs, how you know prostitutes or harlot people who are going to um, immorality commercially was when they are walking about, they open their hair. They walk like that without you know, just open their hair and all of that. So when they got born again, they were single, they were not married. Because once you are married, it was like the custom we see today around Africa when they wear this jalabia. You know, some women do that, right? Cover and all that. They belong to a man. They prove they belong to somebody. Okay. Now, those days, when these people get born again, they come to church like that. Because they are not married. If you are into commercialization of whatever, and you are not married, how it's known is that you, you are just like that. So when they get born again, they get saved, they came to church like that. And the married women started seeing how beautiful it was to expose their hair. And they began to copy these people who were single and started exposing their hair. And thereby causing a conflict. So the men were getting angry. Why would you open your hair? You are married. He said, but it looks good. You are marrying that person who opened their own hair. They brought the issue before Paul. And Paul said, okay. Now, I am in a street. The hair is given for a covering to the head. Stay and listen to your husband. Anyone who permits his wife to expose the hair, no problem. So the issue of covering of hair, how I many of you have seen that is a problem in many churches? The problem of open hair, covering hair, let's take it analytically. If we want to do that, we have to check the history of it. It is not the church who determines if hair should be open or covered. It is the husband. It is not the church, not the problem of the church. Anyone that prayed with a head open, dishonored a head. For the man is the head. It doesn't dishonor this. This is not head. The man is the head. 
So if the man says okay, fine. If he says no, fine. So it is a marriage thing. It is not a doctrine thing. Are, are, you, are you following what I'm saying? But those who don't know, come on and say, I went to see Jesus. And when I saw Jesus in heaven or whatever, Jesus told me, some people are not covering their head. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. <laughs> I was talking to the refugee yesterday. I said those things are not even true. Nobody has gone to heaven. Nobody. No. People have seen the revelation of heaven. Nobody has literally gone to heaven. If you go, you don't come back. No, you don't come back. Of course, as Lazarus. Lazarus was there. And the rich man said, Let Lazarus go and warn my brothers. Abraham said, No, those who are from there. Don't come here. Those from here, don't go there. That scripture alone cancels every confession. How did I get here? What's wrong with this money? <laughs> it's almost becoming like a minister's conference. <laughs> I'm just trying to lay foundation on the Galatian church. But the Galatian church was a church that was very calm. They had seen power. It was a church that had seen the workings of God. Most of the encounter of peace Paul had was in the Galatian church. Was also a church of knowledge. They came all over. They became used to the stories of the law. They knew all the commendations of Moses. And that's why it was them Paul told that please, you people are too conscious of the law. Don't forget that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Stop thinking this by your power and your might. Remember that you can only do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But despite all the Galatian church has seen, many of them were bewitched. I'm laying the foundation to let you know that being bewitched is different from being possessed with witchcraft. I'm laying the foundation so you understand because I begin to talk to you now. Many of you might not be bewitched, but you might have family members who are. Write this down. One of the biggest problems of bewitchment is that those bewitched can never agree. Look at what Paul said. Right before your eyes. Right before your eyes. Meaning a person can be under the spell of bewitchment with his eyes wide open. Those under the spell of bewitchment can never and will never agree. Try to talk to them. They will talk to you. Because these are people whose eyes are wide open but there is a spell. There is an arrow of hell fired into their lives. Education. Intellect, exposure, natural talent cannot handle bewitchment. Education, exposure, intellect, natural talent. One of the scriptures that moved me years ago was Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8. No man has power to retain his spirit. There is no man that has power over the spirit. Bewitchment is only handled by the supernatural. No man has power to retain over his spirit to retain the spirit neither had he power or in the day of death and there is no discharge in war neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it so you can have education you can have intellect you can have exposure and you are still bewitched you can have mental capacity exacerbated capacity and yet you are still under the spell of bewitchment so there are people who their eyes are wide open. They are well schooled as it were. They are educated as it were. But there is still a power of bewitchment in their lives. Am I speaking to somebody? Only the supernatural can handle bewitchment. One man that was bewitched in scripture was Herod. Herod was a king in his day, was bewitched. A news was brought to Herod. And that news came. When the news came about a child that will be born, that child was going to become a king. But this prophecy came on a child. And I did an analogy and discovered as that when this prophecy came on the child, Herod was 86. This child was two months. How can an 86 year old man be after a two month old child because he was scared of his throne? Before the child grows up to 40, you will be 126, dead and gone. But when a man is bewitched, he begins to chase 
chase what is not chasing him he begins to chase shadows now Herod was under the spell of bewitchment one of the people under the spell of bewitchment was a man called King Saul King Saul was under a spell of bewitchment what was the bewitchment in the life of Saul Saul finished a conquest and David actually brought down Goliath and when David brought down Goliath a word came from women it was that word that sent a spell and was fired at King Saul what was the word that came Saul has slain his thousands David has slain his ten thousand and from that day Saul began to chase David the bewitchment actually began in the palace because the Bible says when David was seen to play in first Samuel 16 an evil spirit came from the Lord God did not bring an evil spirit God permitted an evil spirit a bewitchment came upon Saul Saul was a man that was bewitched am I communicating right now so what is bewitchment bewitchment is to be under a spell bewitchment is when you are kept 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 k-e-p-t kept the word kept is very important kept under a spell we are going to pray this morning the word bewitchment is when you are kept under a spell the word bewitchment is when you are manipul manipulated you are regulated by a spiritual entity contrary to your natural will you are regulated you are regulated controlled uh, you are manipulated by a spiritual entity contrary to your own personal will there are things you will do there are steps you will take and it always ends up in negativity it always ends up in disaster it always ends up in regret it always ends up in pain you take those steps your eyes are wide open you take it with so much zeal you take it with so much zest you take it thinking you know what you're doing but the end result is always painful it's always disastrous if it's of God the end will be glorious if it's of God the end will be powerful the end will be outstanding but when it's of the devil the end is always disastrous the end is always catastrophic am I speaking to somebody here when every form of catastrophe and pain always meets you at the end of a venture it means there is a spell of bewitchment in the life of such an individual am I speaking to somebody here to be bewitched is to be taken advantage of taking possession of and taking lead from to be taken taking advantage of taking possession of and taking lead from to be taking advantage advantage something or someone is taking advantage of you something or someone is taking you know uh, 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 advantage to be taking advantage of to be taking possession of and to be taking lead from in other words capacity to be in charge to take to be taking lead from is that capacity to be in charge is taken from you capacity to control is taken from you capacity to dictate and determine what happens is taken from you this is a prayer service before we go into the meeting properly tonight now there are people around your life and some of you of you it's personal Paul was going through bewitchment in Romans 7 when he said the things I want to do are not the things I do the things I don't want to do are the things I do he said listen the Galatian church was a powerful church yet they were bewitched this has nothing to do with redemption am I speaking to somebody here it has nothing to do with salvation or redemption you are not a witch I'm not saying you are a witch but you can be blinded you can be bewitched you can be blinded eyes can be sealed eyes can be covered am i communicating right now to be bewitched is to be heavily hypnotized to do the bidding of a manipulator to be heavily to be heavily hypnotized to do the bidding the bidding of a manipulator to do the bidding of a manipulator to do the bidding of a manipulator listen to me child of God it's time for you to begin to understand that the spiritual world is real and God is a God that works on principles and covenants listen to me do you know I asked myself a question God said to me I can only speak to you when in the realm of the spirit you come to the same energy level with me until you have that spiritual energy level I can't talk to you when Israel sinned against God and Israel had of 
offended God by murmuring. God said to Moses, God said to Moses, come to Sinai. And I did a story about Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai was 6,000 feet high. Moses was 81 when God said to him, come to Sinai. And I asked myself, Father, don't you have sympathy making an 81-year-old man to climb to Mount Sinai? God said, no, he has to come on the same energy level before we can talk. I will go to his level. He has to come to my level, the same energy, energy level, before we can have a conversation. Many are around. Things are happening around them, but it doesn't happen to them because they are not on the same energy level. Do you know the very day when Jesus appeared to Paul in Acts chapter 9, others heard thunder, only Paul heard voice. Others heard thunder, only Paul heard a voice. Others were hearing thunder, only Paul saw the light and he said, I am Christ whom thou persecuted. For it is hard for you to kick against the bricks. It is hard for you to kick against the bricks. No one I say in Isaiah 28, I lay in Zion a stone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. For when the stone falls on you, you shall be broken to pieces. But when you kick your leg on the stone, you shall be grounded. Hear me and hear me well, child of God. God wants you to come on an energy level for there to be a conversation, a communication. Am I talking to somebody here? He said, who has bewitched you? Oh, foolish girl. Number one, one of the signs of bewitchment is foolishness. Who is a fool? Going by scripture. Who is a fool? Who is a fool? First Samuel 26, 21. Defined who a fool is. A fool has been bewitched. Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, my son David. Saul said, I have sinned, rather, return my son David, for I will no longer do more to him because blah, blah, blah. I have played the fool. Anyone who seeks the life of people is a fool. Anyone who is pursuing, who is not pursuing him, is a fool. Under this scripture we have seen now, when you set up your mind, all you have is after people, attack people, against people. The only word for you is that you are, I have been after you. And listen, you are not just being foolish on your own will, you are bewitched. There's something pushing you to pursue people. There's something manipulating you to keep attacking people. Who is a fool? Psalm chapter 14 verse 1. Psalm chapter 53 verse 1. The fool say in his heart, there is no God. When you don't believe in the existence of God, by reason of your scientific oppression, by reason of your physical permutations and contractions, you don't believe in the existence and the reality of God, by reason of your mental orchestration, by reason of what you think you know, by reason of your combination and copulation of science, you are not just a scientist, you are a fool. You are not a scientist. Those that say man evolved from ape, man came from ape, man is a product of evolution, man just appeared. Such people are foolish who is a fool in first in second samuel 13 13 second samuel 13 13 second samuel 13 13 second samuel 13 13 the bible says and with that shall i cause my shame to go as for thee thou shalt be as one of the fools in israel you remember the story of ammon and tamar when Ammon pretended he liked Tamar, or he actually liked Tamar, one Ammon was desiring Tamar. Tamar was a sister to Ammon. When he was desiring Tamar, desiring Tamar so much, it was a sister and a brother relationship, but he was having a passion for Tamar. And Tamar to explain to him who he is, you are a fool. When your passion is being directed negatively in variance with natural reasoning it is foolishness it is foolishness and you are under you are under what a spell you are under a spell when that passion your emotion cannot be controlled you are under a spell it is not appetite it is not stamina it is spell it is spell it is a spell it is a witchcraft spell that polygamy is the platform of a spell it is a spell you see something wrong in this woman and it is right in that one it is not because you've discovered any virtue it is a spell am i speaking to somebody here there is a spell that needs to be handled he said my my brother you are a fool in israel because this thing in you is a spell 
hell it is not natural am i speaking here so when your emotion is at variance with natural thinking logical thinking you are under a spell who is a fool in job chapter 2 and verse 10 job said to his wife he said you speak as one of the foolish women foolish women in this land in other words my wife you are behaving as a a fool is somebody who talks without thinking talk without thinking just open your mouth you just talk you are not thinking you are just talking you are just talking you are not thinking I dealt on this there's a message you must listen to it's our last Sunday message mystery of an expected end I dealt a lot I spoke a lot about that I mentioned a few things about that when you open your mouth you are just speaking without thinking I mentioned a lot it was such a powerful message you go and listen to it and you hear in Proverbs 17 8, 28 Proverbs 17 28 the Bible was saying even a fool when he keeps quiet is assumed wise when he shut at his lips is called a man of understanding am i communicating here when you talk without thinking sometimes it's spell spell is a manipulation is bewitchment to open your mouth and you say certain things before you remember you have said it when they control you spiritually they control your natural faculty when they control your natural faculty they control your verbal declarations and you start making statements that you can't take back that is foolishness who is a fool proverbs chapter 20 verse 3 a fool is one that meddles a fool is one proverbs 20 verse 3 he said it is an honor for a man to cease from strife but every fool will be meddling when you enter into matters that don't concern you you are a fool when you enter into matters and issues that are, and to, don't forget this being foolish under the platform of a spell. I'm, going to, I'm just giving a foundation so that when you see yourself, when you enter consciously or you allow yourself to be dragged into matters that have no direct concern to you, it is a spell that is working. It is foolishness that is working. It is bewitchment. Who has bewitched you? Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Who has? Number two, for every bewitchment, there is a human hand. Who, not what, it was not an event. Who, it was not a happenstance. It was the hand of a human being. Am I communicating here? In Acts chapter 8, if you read from verse 9, the Bible said there was a man called Simon. Simon was a man who before in, in the whole city. One man bewitched the whole city. One man bewitched the whole nation. One man bewitched everybody. How many of you know there are families that brothers don't talk to brothers. Sisters don't talk to sisters. Cousins don't talk to cousins. One person is there manipulating confusion. Manipulating separation. In the whole family children don't talk to mother a woman said to me that she has six children none of them takes a call none of them will call her she's like a lonely person she's a mother and she's like somebody who has no child it was someone who bewitched the family who bewitched the children who has bewitched simon bewitched a whole city the city was in his palm there are families today where there is a confusion and it's an orchestration the handiwork of a single individual am i communicating here there are families today that are under some catastrophic spell some witchcraft deposit and enchantment because one person has a hand in that orchestration one person has a hand sir the powers that bewitched you are under the platform of an individual i like what isaiah said isaiah said in isaiah chapter 31 and verse 3 the egyptians are men they are not god their horses are flesh and they are not spiritual the bible said john chapter 11 and verse 50 it is better for one man to die than for a whole nation to perish it is better for the man who bewitched the family to go than for the family to remain in catastrophe it is better for the man who bewitched the family to expire that for all the young ladies to remain unmarried it is better for a man who bewitched the family to go down than for the family to remain in tears it is better for the man who bewitched the family to be buried six feet below than for the family to experience poverty it is better for one man to die than for a whole nation to perish how can one man put a city in this place
pocket how can one man put a city under his kitty yeah me in first summer chapter 20 one day people woke up in the morning and saw that the whole city was besieged they were trying to go out soldiers they were trying to turn here military they were trying to go here security and they see what is going on a woman in her wisdom he called joab he said joab come he said who are you madam he said i am one of the women in this city a mother in israel a mother of zion let me tell you about our city in those days when people want to do anything in a nation they will come to this nation once they make inquiry here whatever they find out so it is have you come to destroy this city and a mother in israel joab said mommy i'm sorry the problem is not so that is not what happened there was a man who insulted david they call him sheba the son of bikri he insulted david and while we are chasing him he ran into this city we don't know how to find him he scattered himself in the crowd and then in israel every city has just one gate so there's no exit it's either you come out from that gate or enter from that gate so as the man entered the city they didn't know where the man entered they were confused the city is big but it is first round so they said we know what to do stay at the gate burn down the whole city at least when the city is burned down the man will be dead come on a whole city was to be wasted because of one person a whole city was to be wasted because of one individual a whole family to be wasted because of one bewitchment one manipulator and the woman said give me time to pick out to pick out corny people we need wisdom he said the woman with all her wisdom all her wisdom all so wisdom is multifaceted all our wisdom wisdom is multi-dimensional all our wisdom wisdom has many sides all our wisdom he went and he said forget i will not only bring him out i will cut off his head so for him to waste destinies i will cut off his head he said the woman battered the wall and threw him down and the bible said all the armies turned back and they began to go it's not that you are not beautiful it is somebody who attracted late marriage it's not that you are not talented it is somebody who has attracted poverty it's not that you are not a great person it is somebody who has attracted catastrophe and pain that is why god has said we should pray this morning everyone that needs to go for your destiny to shine anyone that has carried the picture it is not that the man didn't like you somebody took your photograph it's not that they will not give you the contract somebody buried your cv what you think you are carrying about to you is a curriculum vitae but before someone else it is a tissue paper somebody twisted it i am here this morning to make a decree as we begin to pray some of you before it gets to the evening session there are certain men that will go there are certain women that will go certain people will aspire it's not that you are not anointed you are called by god but there are certain people who have said the family will never do it whether as preachers whether as bankers whether as bakers whether as academicians someone attracted the spell i have come i have come to pray i've come to make a decree by the power of the holy ghost from my mouth to god's ears whoever that in this he goes for your sake i say he goes for your sake 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 he goes for your sake
has a function. He didn't say, I know how many hair are on your head. That's not what he meant. He said, he said, they are counted. He said, they are numbered. In other words, I have an assignment. I have details. Am I communicating right now? Take your seat. Shadagaba. Numbers. God wants to see how he can project an uncommon fruitfulness. Golodo. How many nine? How many nine are in hundred? Eleven? Eleven? How many nine are in hundred? Eleven? Eleven? Wrong. Ten? Wrong. Eighteen? Close. There's nine. Nineteen. 29, 39, 49, 59, 69, 79, 89, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 19. Am I coming? <laughs> Specific anama shakata and specific assignment, specific roles because you are of more values than many sparrows. Am I speaking here? Luke 12 from verse 4. He said, Don't fear he that can kill your body, and after that, I'm nothing more he can do to you. Luke 4 12, verse 4 to 7. Don't fear he that can kill your body, and after that, have nothing he can do to you. But let me forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear he that after he has killed your body, he has power to cast your soul into hell and not five spartans stood for two sparrows and yet not uh, one of them is forgotten by your father which is in heaven for the very hair of your head are numbered for you have more value than many sparrows and by speaking to somebody here in the time of old god will come and fellowship with man there are a lot of things man has to put in place for god to come down he will keep bulls he will keep bullocks after doing that he will go to the priest all of these are in preparation for an encounter for a visitation when Esther wanted to get that favor before the king, Esther had to prepare a meal, prepare a second banquet, prepare a third banquet before the king could show up. And he kept saying, if he pleases the king, in other words, no matter my preparation, no matter what I've put in place, if he does not please the king, the king cannot show forth. But in the time of old, we don't need all of those preparations. You can host God in the morning. You, you, you can host the king of kings. You can host the Lord of lords. Because there is something so spectacular about your life when a human hand is involved in a spell number one someone other than the victim will enjoy it someone other than the victim someone aside from the victim when somebody is bewitched when someone has bewitched a family the person stands to enjoy it. the victims are in pain I have seen pretty people, I've seen intelligent people, I've seen talented people who are stranded. Sir, it was, it's not just a function of chance. It's not a function of happenstance. It is a bewitchment. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? When someone is bewitched, when someone, a human hand is involved in bewitchment, if someone else can stop it. Someone else can stop it. Someone else can stop it. Someone will benefit when it is stopped. Someone will benefit when it is stopped. If one is bewitched, number one, I said you live like a fool. Number two, I said there is a human hand. Number three, years are wasted. 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 Yes, I wish that. Yes, anytime. Yes, roll by, no achievement. And yet you are smiling. You are bewitched. You should frown at wasted years. When you are comfortable that you are aging and yet dying. You are aging and yet frustrated. You are aging and yet in pain. Sir, it's bewitchment. It is not normal. It is bewitchment. In Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 3. Ecclesiastes 
chapter 6, verse 3. If a man begat an hundred children and live many years, so that the days of his years be many, and his soul not be filled with good, and also that he have no barrier, I say, an untimely birth is better than he. A man that has hundred children, he has no achievement. He died to the extent there was no mere money to bury him. The scripture was, it was better that man was a miscarriage. If a man is grown as children, he has no achievement. He said, a miscarriage is better than that man. It was better he never lived. He says, an untimely bet is better than him. He begat hundred children. He lived many years. The days of his years be many. He shall not be filled with good. He said, he has no burial. A miscarriage. A lost pregnancy is better than him. I wish I was talking to somebody here. So the plan and the purpose of God is that as you grow, as you increase in age, as you increase in time, you should increase in wealth. You should move from good to better. You should move from better to best. You should move from best to grace. You should move from glory from grace to glory and from glory to glory you could should keep increasing the bible said grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ the bible said in first samuel 2 verse 26 luke 2 verse 52 that the child waxed increasing wisdom and stature and was in favor with god and men am i communicating right now yes a rolling bar yes a wasting if you read acts 8 from verse 11 the bible tells us how he said the Bible says in verse 11 and they had regard and to him they had regard because of that long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. People were regarding the man wasting their years. The person taking advantage of their destiny with sorcery. One man kept a whole city in his pocket. Bewitchment. Bewitchment is, is, a, is a spell that you can't control. You are seeing disaster, you are smiling. You see, we're in a nation now where people are bewitched. Bewitched. Poverty, hunger, pain, and yet people are defending the man. What kind of spell did they cast on your head? What kind of bewitchment? Hunger everywhere, insecurity everywhere. That when people are coming for this kind of program, Mama and I will start praying. In those days, we just we prophesy safe journey. Now we intercede safe journey. You have to be interceding, interceding, interceding. Nothing is improving. The only thing that has improved is his health. And somebody is saying, Why are you talking now? Why are you talking? That's bewitch is a spell. These are a people robbed. They are hid in prison houses. They are snared and none say deliver. They are for a spell, a spell and none say restore. That people are using. Have you seen a young lady who be in a relationship? They will beat her, she will stay. They are maltreating her, she will stay. They manipulate her, she will stay. Die there. Die there. When your eyes will clear, you will know that you cannot be in an abusive relationship because of any stupid benefit. Every benefit is what when the relationship is abusive every benefit is worthless somebody can be paying you to slap you somebody can be fending for you to punch you am i talking to somebody here and this man was the one can i say this that thing that has covered your eye that thing that has covered your eye that you are smiling with the people killing you you are smiling with the people doing you that thing that has covered your eye today you will react Can I say something here? Can I say something here? The worst thing to check to know how you look is a mirror. The mirror is the worst to check to know how you look. Because that thing you see there, you are more than it. The mirror only shows you the cattle. The word of God shows you the potential. Potential is not what you have. What you are. Potential is what you have that you have not utilized. 
Elisha is what you have after a period of time and you put in some years into education but potential is what is inside you that you have not utilized the mirror doesn't show you that your parents don't show you that your friends can't tell you that but the word of God is the perfect law of liberty am I speaking to somebody right now who has bewitched you they heard him in regard yes wasted masokateba when the canker worm the caterpillar and the palmer worm when they're in oppression they don't eat meal or food they eat years no wonder god said when you want to help a man what you do is that all the years that the canker worm the locust the palmer worm the caterpillar has eaten wasted number one the older you go the more the battle increases when years are wasted the older you go the more the battle increases there has been no year you have had rest as people say happy new year you own this happy new war happy new year happy new confrontation happy new year happy, happy new battle how can a man be in captivity and catastrophe for 38 years? The man has been in that condition. The man was not 38. The sickness was 38. That man's affliction was an adult. His affliction had a capacity to vote and be voted for. The Bible says he had been in that condition for 38 years. The captivity and the incapacitation was matured. 38 years on the spot. Heaven showed up. Heaven showed up. The man was not praying. Just because he was in the right place, heaven showed up. The man was not fasting. Heaven showed up. How can Jesus? He saw the wind boisterous. He saw the raging storm. He saw the tempest. Yet! He got in. Walked on the water. Why? For a man. For a man, just for a man who was in the city of the Gadarenes in Mark chapter 5, verse 1, he was 5, verse 2, he was in the city of the Gadarenes. Jesus walked in there. Why? Because there was a scripture for that man in Genesis 49, verse 19. He said, God, a troop shall overcome you, but you shall overcome at the last. What is a troop? A troop is a legion. A legion, he was saying, a legion. Jacob was blessing his children. He was saying, Hey, you, God, a time will come. One of your descendants, a legion will overcome him. But at the last, he shall overcome. You shall have one descendant that a legion will possess. But at the end, he shall overcome. God. And if you read Mark chapter 5 verse 2, somebody from the lineage of God. He was in the graveyard, cutting himself. Jesus asked the demons, how many are you? He needed to confirm the scripture that he had read. How many are you? They said, we are a legion. Say, oh, you are the one that was spoken about in Genesis 49, 19, that a troop, a legion, that demon of hell didn't know that that man who they had possessed was a potential evangelist. After Jesus set him free, the Bible says he went to Decapolis. Decapolis means 10 cities. 10 cities. When he say he went to Decapolis, it means he became a popular evangelist in 10 cities. Am I talking to somebody here? From being bewitched and being under a spell. Oh my God. That man was a tourist attraction for the merchandise. Do you know that the people in that city, when Jesus casted that demon out, they were angry. Because physically you thought they were rearing pig. They were not taking care of pigs. That man was the tourist attraction. He brought people to that city. They kept looking at a man who was busy cutting himself. They were using him. Using him to achieve financial benefits and gains. Who has bewitched you? So what Jesus came, he destroyed their business. He destroyed their investment. He destroyed all because that period. And you say, why would God destroy their investment? God destroyed their investment on many forests and many fronts. Number one, the Bible hates pigs. God was against pigs. God was against unclean animals. They were taking care of unclean animals, violating the instructions of God. Am I talking to somebody here? Pigs are not bad. But at that time, God was against unclean animals. He was against them. And yet, the people were doing that at variance with the commandment and the mandate of God. We are going to pray today. 
Who is happy? That your years are rolling by. Who is happy? A whole city. He said, for a long time. When the man's years is wasted, he gets so much and loses them so fast. He gets so much and he loses them so fast. When the man here is wasted, he experiences premature extinction at the peak of a career or life. When the man sees is wasted, he lives a life without God. Without being conscious of God. God is not in his schedule. God is not in his plan. God is not in his thought. God! In the name of Shatakamanta. God is not in his thought. God is not in his plan. In his orchestration, mental orchestration, daily activity, daily organogram, God is not there at all. That is the power of bewitchment. We are going to pray on three forums, on three dimensions and platforms. We are going to lift up our voice to scream to the heavens that, oh God, deliver me from bewitchment. This spell, this is not you, sir. These things happening is not you. Some steps you take are not you. I said the hardest person to tell he has been bewitched is one who has been bewitched. It is a spell on certain things happening in your life right now. It's a satanic recurrent activity. It has happened to your mother. It has happened to your grandmother. That's why I said it is current. Familiar spirit is a spirit that knows your family. It's a spirit that knows your family. It knows how to trigger their emotions to reactions so that the outcome will be a repetition of what has happened before. It triggers your reaction. The outcome becomes a repetition of what your father did. It triggers your, act, your, your emotion. The, act, the uh, uh, outcome will become the action of what your mother did. So it's certainly so cunning and so crafty. So it works. That was why it, a snake... I'm of you know a snake can live with a person for one month the devil is not a serpent the devil is not a serpent but the devil assumed the position of a serpent satan entered a serpent because then the serpent was more cunning so he looked for a more cunning entered when he entered the serpent he assumed god created all animals but the serpent was the only animal that god recreated That's why the serpent is not attached to the devil. He said, the old serpent, the devil. The serpent was the only animal God recreated. God created lion, God created this, but the serpent God recreated. If you see Genesis 3, 1, he said, the serpent was more cunning than any beast. A beast is a four-footed animal that has leg. You did biology in school, didn't you? That has leg, has hand. It's called a beast. And when God said, serpent, you will crawl on your belly. Immediately the hand entered, the leg entered, they began to crawl. So God recreated the serpent. Because if the serpent had continued like a beast, this earth would have been wasted. If the serpent is crawling and yet there's still disaster, what if it was a beast? So when God said, so as a beast, it had hands, it had legs. When God said, from now, you will crawl. So there was a recreation. God had to recreate it to see how man can be comfortable. Am I communicating right now? I, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There is somebody here. Listen, someone sits down and is pressing buttons. Can a believer be possessed? No. Can a believer be oppressed? A believer be oppressed? Yes. Obsessed, yes. Suppressed, yes. Depressed, yes. Compressed, yes. Possessed, no. Why well, you have the Holy Ghost inside of you? What else can stay in you? It's the Holy Ghost. But you can give a place to the devil. Don't forget Ephesians 4.27. Give no place. You can give a place to the devil. Am I communicating right now? Jesus one time spoke in John 14, 30. The prince of the world come He has nothing in me. There can be nothing around you, but it can, there can be nothing in you, but it can manipulate what's around you. It can be in you. Satan can be in you when you have the Holy Ghost. Darkness and light cannot stay together. But around you, they manipulate you. They manipulate you. Who's ready to pray? The conference is beginning properly tonight. This one is introduction. This introduction. Because I want us to pray. I was talking to God. 
And God said, this is one of the battles that many people who call themselves children of God are going through. You lose things that are precious to you. All of a sudden, you are antagonistic of what can help your life. You are antagonistic. You are antagonistic. Something inside you is reacting against what can help you. And you, you gravitate towards people that have no consequence to your life. Be antagonistic of the people that are sent by God to help your life. You gallivant, you go around, parabolate around people that have no value, had no impact. Be upstanding. Who is ready? Who is ready to pray? I came, listen, this conference is bloody. It's brutal. I'm not joking. This night is different. Tomorrow morning, we are here with anger in our system. You know what the Bible says? It said, Esau, when you have had dominion, when you have had, you shall break the yoke of your neck. No. But you know what today's translation says? It says, when you have developed red eyes. Somebody say red eyes. He said, when you have developed red eyes, you will break yourself free. When you have developed red, when you have prayed to that boiling point, you have become deadly dangerous. Brutal. Pata, kata, ta. I have seen great people ruined by manipulation. Great. A bewitchment. A spell. Who is ready to pray? Lift your right hand on the fire. You see, this is the reason. This is the reason why you have to be extra prayerful and super sensitive. My father and the Lord said the best gift a man should desire is the signing of spirit. This is not working of miracle. To know which spirit is manipulating you. But my father and the Lord said that. Huh? I expect a power. It's a sense. It's a discerning of spirit. To know the spirit in the atmosphere. To know the spirit that is that is manipulating. Because Satan never appears as Satan. He appears as the angel of light. If Satan appears as Satan, would you catch him out? Satan comes as God. With all the forms and fashions of divinity. Do you know what the Bible calls him? Ezekiel 20. I'm, I'm, I'm talking too much. Let me round up. Do you know what the Bible calls? This is just too much for one session. Do you know what the Bible calls Satan in Ezekiel 28? He said he was full of wisdom and full of beauty. Satan was, Lucifer rather, Lucifer was the end of beauty. That was why he stood in front of God. It was the end. If you are talking of beauty, Lucifer was the end of beauty. If you are talking of wisdom, it was the end of it. That's why he stood before God. To just worship. To worship. So when people see Lucifer, they, are, they begin to have an idea. If he's like this, how is God? Because sometimes those around you are a definition of who you are. That was why when, <laughs> when the king, why did the king, when the Daniel and the three boys came from captivity, the king said, give them vegetables. Give, why? He needed them to build themselves. So when they stand before the palace, they look well fed. And they said, No, give us vegetables. Give us this, give us this. We need our own meal. Because sometimes it is not, it is not where you are that determines what you eat, it's who you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me say this. John the Baptist orders for a menu. 
John the Baptist walked to a restaurant. Say, what do you have your menu? Do you have locust? Do you have white honey? Do you have termites? He said, give me locust. Spice it with white honey. Put grasshoppers by the side. Garnish it with termites. A man who eats termite, white honey, locust, you think he'll be normal? <laughs> His kind of delivery is different from you that eats normal meals. So the guy came out operating under a very strange frequency. Straight in the wilderness. Not just rude, but crude. Are we communicating here? Bewitchment. It's very crafty. Called the spirit of the ruler it's when he rises up against you because every man has a day when the spirit of the ruler will come the spirit of the ruler rise up because he says leave not your place for yielding pacified great offenses when the spirit of the ruler is at work he comes under the forms and fashion of divinity he puts on the clothes the cloth the cloak, C-L-O-A-K, the cloak of divinity. It takes hypersensitivity. There are certain good ideas that are not God's ideas, but all God's ideas are good ideas. There are certain good ideas that are not God. There are things I put in place. I want to do the Lord said to me, it sounds nice, but I'm not behind it. I went to America and they took me, someone took, took me to a place where they are giving out certain equipment, used equipment. In America, 20, 20, 2019 wheelchair is old. 2019 stretcher is old. They need 2020. So they're about to dispose all of those things at a cheap rate. 2016 stethoscope, stethoscope is old. 2016 fig is old. But here, 20, 1998, self. The gadgets can even make you. <laughs> can worse, rusty, rusty. Worse in your medical condition. So I went there and they were giving out things. Ah, the witcher was to me, it was glitching, it was new. He said, No, it's 2019. Yeah, we can't use it. They, so, pass all of them, put in the container, and I said, Wow, good idea for a hospital. I saw all the um, equipment for the heart, equipment for the intestine, the scan equipment. I saw the several things, and the Lord said to me, What do you want to do? I said, I want to open a hospital. The Lord said, You'll be the first to be admitted. I said, what? He said, I didn't send you. I walked out of that place. I ran out. I said, yeah, let's go. After a while, I said, we didn't go there again. I said, go here. Good idea, but not God's idea. It takes you sensitive to see what looks so good. And yet you are asking God, is this you? Am I might talk to somebody here? Do you know what it means? You are fasting for 40 days. You are on 40 days high frequency of fasting. That's the time for you to manifest. Turn stone to bread. That's a good time. By reason of the power I've accumulated over 40 days. Let me let this devil know. Son of the living God. It takes sensitivity. To leave stones as stones. And bread as bread. Stones are stones. Bread is bread. Leave stone. Don't turn stone to bread. Let stone be stone. Let bread be bread. With all the power, everything. Stones are stone. Bread is bread. Don't turn stones to bread. You cannot become a superman. Leave stones as stones. Let bread be bread. So, despite unction and anointing, it cannot swallow the place of wisdom and sensitivity. What makes elders? Elders. It's not age. Sensitivity. There are many old men that are not elders. Because their old age has taught them nothing. They've let nothing. Am I talking to somebody here? Who's ready to pray? Three prayers that we're going to take right now. Blessed be the name of the Lord Almighty. Lift your right hand and say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every bewitchment. Every bewitchment. No, listen, as you are praying, you have your family in mind. 
you have your loved ones in mind. You have your destiny helpers in mind. Say in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Every bewitchment. Every bewitchment. The Lord is giving me a double assurance. He said, if we can take this prayer, there will be some reactions that will surprise you. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every bewitchment. Every bewitchment. Manifesting as foolishness. Manifesting as foolishness. Around my life and destiny. Open your mouth and turn into prayer now. What? 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 What?
grande. ¡Ey! Don't forget, Simon was a sorcerer. Simon was one called great. By sorcery, he had hypnotized the whole city. So someone was being enriched by using the virtues and the stars of the people. This is where we are going to direct our prayers specifically. Lifting up our voice against definite individuals. Definite individuals. When God puts a destiny enemy in your hand, you don't spare them. God doesn't spare them. First Samuel 24, 19, if a man finds his enemy, will he let him go away? First Samuel 24, 19. If a man finds his enemy, will he let him go away? Who is ready? God put an enemy in your hand and you are so nice. 